There are two types of motivation and only one of them is sustainable. So if you're currently struggling to stay motivated, you could be using the wrong one. Let me explain. A study conducted by the world-renowned researchers DC and Ryan at the University of Rochester wanted to explore the two kinds of motivation and their effects on a human being. They devised a really clever experiment to do this. So they gathered a bunch of participants and then they made them do a challenging task and then they divided them into two groups. The first group received feedback that any success they had during the challenge was due to their own competence, their own autonomy or their own strategy or their own effort. The second group, however, received feedback that emphasized that any success they had was due to external rewards and pressures. So things like grades and approval from others. Now this is where it gets interesting because both groups were then asked after the feedback to do some more challenging tasks and it's these results that are actually mind-blowing. Those who were in the first group, so in other words, the people who were told that their success was due to their own efforts, they actually showed in follow-up tasks that they were willing to stick at the challenge, they wanted to take on challenging activities, and they persisted longer. However, the participants in the second group, the participants that were told that their success would lead to good grades and approval from others, that group didn't persist in their tasks. And in fact, they chose easier tasks when they could. So what's going on here? Well, basically this is where the two types of motivation I mentioned at the beginning of the video come into play. Because the first group, they were motivated by internal rewards. Things like a feeling of being competent or a feeling of being autonomous or a feeling of satisfaction. And we call this intrinsic motivation. Whereas the second group, they were motivated by external rewards, things like approval and good grades and praise and things like that. This we call extrinsic motivation. So what we can learn from this study and many, many more studies that have been published since this initial breakthrough study is that if you want your motivation to be sustainable, if you want to learn how to persist in things long term, you need to be choosing intrinsic motivation as your fuel source not extrinsic motivation. In other words, you need to get in touch with what is naturally internally rewarding for you. Outside of the praise, outside of what you'll get from the activity, outside of what other people say, outside of money and accolades and anything else, you need to connect to what is internally rewarding for you. Oftentimes, and according to these researchers, it's a task that can make you feel a bit competent, or it's a task where you feel like you have some control over it or it's a task that you find inherently enjoyable, or perhaps a task that involves some sort of relatedness and social company. But it could be many other things. The point is that you need to get in touch with what is internally rewarding to you, and you need to base your fuel source in those things. That way you'll be intrinsically motivated and not extrinsically motivated. Now what's important to understand here is that I saw this firsthand with my psychotherapy clients. When I first opened my psychotherapy practice, I had a lot of people coming to therapy because they're feeling unmotivated. It's actually a common reason that people come to therapy because they want to feel a bit more motivated. They just feel a bit deflated. They feel like they don't really have that drive that they need to turn their life around and improve their lives. But with each of these unmotivated clients that walked through my therapy office doors, what I noticed was that there was a similar pattern amongst all of them in terms of their motivational source. They were all relying on extrinsic motivation. They were relying on the praise of others. They were waiting for a bit of money or a bonus or a promotion. They were doing something because they were waiting for some sort of outcome that was external to them some sort of praise, some sort of accolade, some sort of credential. Those were the sorts of external things that they were being driven by. And most of them were no longer connected to what was actually internally rewarding about the journey that they were on. Whether it be a career path, whether it be related to a family obligation, whether it be related to a hobby, they weren't connected to what was internally rewarding about that thing. They might have been at some point, but they were no longer connected to it when they walked through the doors of my therapy office. And so this is where this video is going to get very practical because what I did with them and what they found very helpful was learning how to switch their fuel source from extrinsic motivation to intrinsic motivation. What exactly do you have to do to be able to change your fuel source, to be able to switch over to this now what we understand as a more sustainable fuel source. And here's how you can do that in your own life, whether you're in therapy or not. First, you have to understand that the best way to tap into intrinsic motivation is to, from the start, choose activities that are internally rewarding for you, activities that you do find personally meaningful and satisfying. So this means if you're deciding on what career to pursue, go for the career 
that you find more internally rewarding. If you want to start working out, don't just do any workout routine. Don't do exercises you hate. Perhaps start with a sport, something where you can still be active, but it is personally meaningful and enjoyable to you. If you're going to start a diet, don't just drink green smoothies if you hate green smoothies. Actually include fruits and veggies that you like the taste of. Those could be, you know, for me, it's, it's things like mango, it's things like grapes that I really enjoy. And that helps me get my nutrients in while being internally rewarding. And in my own life, I've found that because I know I can eat some mango and some grapes, I actually look forward to it. And that's what's helped me stick to that for years. This is how you stay motivated. It's by choosing activities that are intrinsically motivating. But there's a big problem here because what you might have realized up to this point, perhaps you've been thinking about it while I've been saying this, is that sometimes we don't get to choose the activity. Sometimes to get what we want, we have to do something just for the sake of doing it. Sometimes we're going to have to do things that we don't enjoy and that aren't naturally intrinsically rewarding. So what then? What do we do in those situations? If that is the case, if you are in that unfortunate situation, my advice then is to either focus on the aspects of that that are intrinsically rewarding or introduce some intrinsic rewards into the activity. For example, if you're a cash teller at a grocery store and you really don't enjoy that kind of work, but you do enjoy speaking to people, you do enjoy socializing or you enjoy complimenting people, then start to incorporate that with each person that walks to your till. Strike up a conversation, notice something that you can compliment them about that will give the rest of the job a bit of a lighter feeling and it will make you more likely to get up for work the next day. Another example is if you have to study. Look, not many of us enjoy studying, but if you do have to study for something, for some upcoming test or some assignment or some task, then you need to introduce some sort of intrinsic reward into the activity of studying. So for example, listen to some music that you enjoy while studying. Or if you enjoy being outdoors, if you enjoy sunlight and fresh air, then lay a blanket out in your backyard and study there, create something that's enjoyable, cozy for you. You see, with those examples, you're introducing some sort of intrinsic reward to make the activity more sustainable. This is how you stay motivated. You tap into the power of intrinsic motivation. If you'd like more tools from therapy for daily living, more tools from therapy to improve the quality of your life, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. I'll see you in the next one.